the next experiment that we are having is an amplitude modulation amplitude modulation is a method by which a message signal which can normally not be sent at a very long distance is converted into a new format and is able to be sent to a long distance there are many methods of modulation the first of which is the basically the basic one which is called as amplitude modulation that we are going to do today in modulation there are two kinds of waves the message which has to be sent and the carrier which carries the message to a long distance the message signal is also called as a modulating signal because a carrier that carries the information the message signal the carrier has to be modulated so there is a carrier wave and that carrier wave is modulated using a modulating wave or a modulating signal which is a message signal and the end result is a modulated wave so carrier wave modulating wave and modulated wave in amplitude modulation the instantaneous value of the carrier amplitude changes in accordance with the amplitude and frequency variations of the modulating signal so as i have said already the signal that we are having here is carrier and that carrier you can see here it is written the instantaneous value that means at every instant whatever is the value of the carrier amplitude we are varying the amplitude so that's why it is called amplitude modulation the instantaneous value of the carrier amplitude is changed in accordance with what in accordance with the modulating signal which is also actually a message signal so the carrier amplitude is modulated by the amplitude of the modulating signal let's see mathematically what happens in it we can express a cosine carrier with the simple expression that we have here so what you have here is a carrier wave which is given the instantaneous value vc which is actually capital vc capital vc is the maximum value which it can go the maximum voltage of the carrier and it is having a frequency of fc this wave can be drawn so this is a carrier wave which has a mag magnitude maximum amplitude of vc this carrier wave has to be modulated using a message signal or a modulating signal so let us look at that modulating signal the modulating signal is also expressed in a similar formula huh? sinusoidal signal vm sin 2 pi f mt so according to this equation what we understand is that the maximum value is vm and the frequency is fm if i draw that of these two signals you can see very very neatly that the frequency of the carrier is higher than the frequency of the modulating signal that means fc is larger than fm this basic rule has to be followed every time this rule cannot be broken 
remember this very carefully the frequency of carrier should be very very large than the frequency of the message signal actually it is because the message signal is having a low frequency we are using a carrier so carrier is having a high frequency that's why it is able to travel very far distance and you know uh, do the communication whereas a low frequency signal like this has a lot of problems but I cannot all of a sudden make a, a message signal to be I cannot get a signal message signal which is very high frequency message signal has its own characteristic it may be high frequency it may be low frequency anyway the message signal is having a low frequency as compared to the carrier frequency now again look at what is the what is the uh, definition of AM wave the AM wave defines that the instantaneous amplitude of the carrier which is actually which one given by this dotted line that is changed in accordance that means this maximum value is changed in accordance with this value so right now you can see that the peak is not changing isn't it now if you try to change those peaks with respect to this signal so that means if I am trying to change those peak according to how I have drawn here how will I get the signal the signal will look something like this so here you can see that originally the signal was having a you know the carrier signal was having a height of VC maximum voltage of VC but once modulation was done the carrier waves the carrier waves amplitude was modulated you know modulated means changing to modulate means to change so here the amplitude of the carrier wave was changed or modulated with respect to this low frequency message signal so this is this much part is unmodulated as soon as you gave the modulation you can see that the amplitude goes up and down this is actually a AM wave and if if you want to achieve this AM wave you know very correctly uh, you can understand it also that you know you cannot have modulation if you you cannot have a very good modulation if you modulate it with a signal that is having so much height that it goes under it hmm? you cannot do like that kind of modulation so that sets the first rule the first rule is that in amplitude modulation it is particularly important that the peak value of the modulation signal must be less what is the peak value of the modulating signal the modulating signal as we can see here will have this much amplitude now that that peak value should not be greater than VC which is mathematically represented by this equation so always if this much is VC and if this much is VM or even I can say this much is VM then that VM should not exceed the value of VC otherwise the signal will get distorted okay and now what we can see here is previously previously when the amplitude of this carrier wave was this much now it is changing so it is VC plus the instantaneous message signal instantaneous message signal so at this point it is VC plus the instantaneous value at this point it is VC plus the instantaneous value so the maximum amplitude of the carrier the maximum amplitude of the carrier is now changing from this to this let's write an equation for it so the original carrier was only VC cos 2 pi FCT but now that is changing with respect to the 
magnitude of the carrier so I substituted the VC as VC plus VM hmm? previously when I am only talking about the carrier the carrier was just VC cos 2 pi FCT but now according to this diagram I can see that VC's value is changing with respect to this so it is now VC plus VM where VM we already have designed uh, have already said that it is this value so I have substituted VM where did we define it we defined it let me take you back here see here we define the value of VM and here it is VC now in modulation VC has changed VC has changed to what VC has changed to VC plus VM so that VM I am substituting here I can take this cost value inside it so if I am going to take this cos 2 pi FCT inside I will get it into this value isn't it I will get it into this value so this is the output V2 the output signal is basically this one so in effect what has what what is my modulator my modulator is basically having a information or message or modulating signal VM and a carrier signal VC given and the modulator basically gives me this equation in the output that just now we have seen isn't it just now we derived this equation that equation was this one if you look closely here this can be written as VC cos 2 pi FCT okay no, no change here but look here it is sine a into cos b and we know what is sin a cos b we can expand it isn't it when we expand it we basically get into this format wherein what do you see you see that basically the output of the modulator which we had written here in this format or in this format when we expand it we basically get what all we get an FC component we get an FC plus FM component and FC minus FM component that means input I am putting some FM frequency and FC frequency and in the output I am getting FC FC plus FM and FC minus FM you must be remembering that already we have done a lab wherein in the input you gave two different frequencies and in the output you get the sum and the different frequencies the experiment was mixer so basically a modulator as you can see here the modulator can be said to be basically a kind of mixer only so if in a mixer you give FM and FC you get in the output FC FM also and then FC plus FM FC minus FM so here you are having it the signal that we call as F AM signal is basically having an FC and then FC plus FM and FC minus FM isn't it ha if we draw that if we look at that waveform again diagrammatically we can represent it by this particular diagram this is a very good diagram which explains many things very clearly see this is the AM wave the equation of which is written here isn't it this AM wave was generated by the mixer when you put this modulating signal and this carrier together in the mixer or you modulated this carrier using this modulating signal and what is the net effect the net effect is you got this signal well this signal is set in this equation it is said to be composed of three parts the original carrier plus some FC plus FM component and FC minus FM component and what is happening they are all added up the, all the three are added up I have drawn all the three here isn't it this is a pure sine wave this one this is also a pure sine wave according to this equation and this is also a pure sine wave that is your FC 
and the addition of all of this will give you this so mathematically at every time instant if you would go and add up it will give you this value if you would go and add up here it will give you this value if you go and add up here it will give you this value so every time when you add it up you will get this particular signal so when we say that there is an AM wave that we have generated like this it will be having a carrier component and an FC plus FM and an FC minus FM and let me tell you this one thing very clearly this signal that FC plus FM and FC minus FM that you are having these two signal are just the compressed form of the message signal so if my message signal is not like you know sinusoidal if my message signal would have been something like this then the FC plus FM component would have been looking something like this what do you see has happened here this signal I have compressed it isn't it if I compress this signal I will get it and that is what has exactly happened here you have got the message signal here and that message signal if you would compress it would look like this if you compress further it would look like this so the message signal which was previously in this frequency FM frequency has now shifted to FC plus F FC plus FM and FC minus FM so you have shifted the message signal in FM frequency to a higher frequency FC plus FM and FC minus FM these two are called as the sidebands and they contain the same <coughs> they contain the same information that is there here clear so let me again go back basically we said that it is the modulator is basically a mixer itself so the design of an AM modulator will be basically a mixer which we have already seen you can refer to the mixer design it's the same thing the only thing is that here we have taken care that VM should be less than VC and the VM frequency we have taken it to be 2 kilohertz and the VC we have taken it to be 18 kilohertz this LC see R2 R1 RE is basically designed in the same way as the mixer is designed the value of L and C you keep it to select the frequencies centering around 18 kilohertz that is the carrier frequency <coughs> and we know how to set the value of L and C if we know the frequency so if you keep the frequency here as 18 kilohertz you can get the value of L and C whereas R1 R2 RE is the same design procedure that we have done for the case of mixer circuit and in the output what will we get you know the output of the mixer isn't it we will get this kind where as you have previously seen in the previous diagram you have an FC component you have an FM minus FC minus FM and then FC plus FM this is the high upper sideband which is also called as the USB this is called as the USB this is called as the LSB and this is your carrier signal and what is this small one that you see here that is actually your FM signal FM in the sense the message signal but why I have drawn it to be small here it is because the LC is having a selection curve which looks something like this and if the selection curve looks like this you can see that you know here it will be very less value here also it will be less so actually it will be selecting very small value the output of this one will be having a very small value of FM only and this is the spectrum that we want of the AM isn't it so that we have designed the mixer and it's the mixer itself which is working as a amplitude modulator now once we have got the amplitude modulator wave we want to calculate what is known as the modulation index 
so as you can see here modulation index is given by this equation where you need to understand what is v max and v min if you are having the um, am signal as drawn here then the two peaks the lower peak and the higher peak if you would go that together is basically v max peak to peak half of it will be just v max so from here to here the voltage is v max and from here to here the voltage that you are having is the v min peak to peak half of that would be v min so if we are able to find out v max peak to peak and v min peak to peak out of the output waveform that you have got you can calculate the modulation index using this equation okay so in the output waveform that you have got like this you try to calculate what is the peak to peak of the maximum value and the peak to peak of the minimum value and you will be able to calculate the modulation index so you have got an amplitude modulated wave and this is going to be sent to a distant location in the distant location you have to demodulate it anyway when you do the modulation there can be under modulation as you have here which is called as a 50% modulation when the modulation index is 0.5 or you can have 100% modulation where the modulation index is m is equal to 1 or you can have over modulation where the value of m will be 1.5 m is equal to 1.5 m is equal to 1 and m is equal to 0.5 this cannot be achieved in our circuit because this would create distortion basically what you have to understand here is this is an over modulated output what is the meaning of over modulated over modulated means the value of vm here the value of vm is greater than vc that is over modulated and how do you understand whether a wave is over modulated or not you look at this particular section or even at this particular section you will find out that normally the sine wave should have gone like this but in this section or this section or even this section and this section that has suddenly done a 180 degree jump suddenly a 180 degree jump means suddenly it has gone in the negative side and that is what you are having so over modulated wave we do not want you should not try to get it in this particular circuit m is equal to 1 is difficult to achieve in our circuit but that is the case when actually vm is equal to vc that is critically modulated critical modulation critically modulated and this one is under modulated which is good for us and this is what we will be achieving in our experiment wherein actually vc will be greater than vm now this signal when it is sent to a receiver it has to be demodulated what is demodulation demodulation is the process of taking the message signal out of the am signal so am signal consists of carrier which is carrying the message signal that message signal when we want to take out that process is called as amplitude demodulation look at the signal that we had previously got the am signal from here you can see that if by some method i am able to extract this particular envelope this particular envelope envelope means outline eh? so if I am able to extract this particular envelope in a way I will be able to extract the message signal so by some method I have to extract this envelope so the amplitude demodulator that we are going to study is basically called as a 
envelope detector it is called as a envelope detector so you have to design a envelope detector to work as a amplitude demodulator look at the signal here and look at the circuit here the AM signal you basically pass it through a diode when it passes through a diode after that there is a capacitor and a resistor what happens to the envelope let me take the pen see when you pass an AM signal through the diode the diode can only conduct in this direction that means half of that waveform will be completely gone that means this part will not be coming out of which section of this particular this point so at this point you will be having only the top half the bottom half will completely become zero why because the diode is unidirectional it allows current to flow only in this direction this one means this voltage means the current is going to flow in the opposite direction that will not happen so here you are going to have only the positive half now that positive half voltage that we are giving will charge the capacitor and that charging will lead to you know as you can see here with the voltage the capacitor will charge and it will reach here once it reaches there the voltage here starts to drop but the capacitor has already charged to a high voltage and here it starts to drop now this capacitor will start discharging via this path through this R if the discharging takes place very quickly it will discharge like this until it reaches this point where again it starts to charge again discharge and again it starts to charge again discharge again it starts to charge so the discharge is depend on the value of R and C so if the value of R is high the discharge will be slow if it is slow then it will be like as it's drawn here but if the value of R is too high that means if the discharge is very very slow as you can see here after reaching this point it will not come to this point it will discharge very very slow only so it will keep on discharging keep on discharging here and all nothing will happen because the voltage peak is not achieved only after it reaches here that it tries to come to this peak the ca capacitor again tries to come to that peak so what do you see the envelope is lost so the value of RC should not be too large if it is too large then it will not follow the envelope we want the envelope to follow like this isn't it so it's charging discharging charging discharging charging discharging charging discharging charging discharging so RC should not be too large at the same time RC should not be too less also because if it becomes too less then the output waveform will you know now the output waveform looks like charging discharging charging discharging charging discharging so you get somewhat a sine wave you know you get somewhat a sine wave but if your discharging is too much then the charging discharging will look something like this it will look as if you are ha your output signal the demodulated signal is having lot of noise so the RC value should be very very judiciously selected it should not be too small and it should not be too large basically as you can see here let me rub off all the ink mark as you see here the value of RC should be less than or equal to this value where FM is the modulating signal frequency and M is the modulation index okay so by this method you will be able to calculate the value of R C so that finishes demodulation thank you